Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, let me start by introducing Callum Fletcher. Callum is the founder and chairman of the Asia Leader Series, uh, one of Europe's primary initiatives uh, for building a shared understanding with Asia on political, economic, and social themes. Uh, Asia Leader Series is headquartered in Zurich, and the series welcomes founders, chairs, owners of European and Asian large corporations and companies. And actually, he is at the origin of today's uh, Japan lecture. And that's why I want to hear from him a short introduction on how he made Sachio Simoto come to Zurich. Please. Callum. Thank you very much, Christian. Thank you. It's a real honor to be here, standing here in the same room as, as Churchill, although you're not here to listen to me, so I'll be brief. Um, a few years ago, I felt, as many of us probably have also felt, that the world has become more and more divided. Um, so I thought what might be interesting would be to bring leaders of very big companies from Europe to meet with leaders of very big companies in Asia. And that I felt that maybe this could take place in Switzerland, because you have in this country such a, a stable political environment and a very business-friendly environment and a place that is uh, widely recognized as a, as a safe place to hold dialogue. So this initiative, uh, which you may have heard of through some of the emails from the Europa Institute, is, is called the Asia Leaders Series. And uh, our meetings are very small, only 12 people. Um, it's only for the chairman of companies with over a billion dollars of revenue and that are operating in Europe and Asia. It's not political, so there is no uh, political influence and there are no sponsors and there's no media. That way we can have real dialogue. And uh, so I ventured out to Japan and I met with uh, Dr. Sachio Simoto, who uh, kindly agreed to participate in our program. Um, which we'd been holding every three months, these meetings since 2016. Um, so the first time that uh, Semoto-san came uh, to Switzerland was in 2018, and he, uh, we had our meeting, and then he gave a lecture at the Barolac uh, to a group of business leaders. And so the relationship has uh, emerged on since then. Our initiative has also evolved, and uh, we're just, delighted to be able to bring leaders such as Samoto san to Switzerland and to conduct this uh, important dialogue at a time in which uh, I and I think all the sort of partners uh, involved in this initiative feel it is so important to hold uh, impartial dialogue between, between people who have power. So uh, that is the story, but I want to thank you very much, Christian, for this uh, welcoming of uh, Dr. Samoto, who I know feels uh, wonderfully privileged to be invited here to speak in this uh, most prestigious auditorium. So thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, here we are assembled uh, to uh, have the third edition of the Japan Lecture Series at the University of Zurich. The lecture hall we are in has a history for innovative ideas on 19 September 1946, Winston Churchill held a famous speech, uh, Let Europe Arise, here at this very spot. In this speech, he pleaded for a United States of Europe, and as you all know, it took roughly 10 years until the European Economic Community was created by the Treaty of Rome in 1957. Today, I'm honored to introduce one of the great Japanese business leaders, who shaped the telecommunications sector in Japan over the last 50 years. Dr. Sachio Semoto was born 1942 in Nara, in the ancient, ancient capital of Japan. He is deeply rooted in, in the Kyoto area, where he graduated from Kyoto University's Faculty of Engineering in 1966. Later, he went to Florida to achieve a master's degree and a PhD in electrical engineering from the University of Florida. Internationally minded and locally rooted, these two characteristics represent Sachio's uh, personality perfectly. In preparing for this lecture, he told me that contrary to common belief, 
Kyoto is not only a touristical hotspot, but that the Tokyo companies are a major driving force for innovation and Japan's economic revival. Sachio Semoto's appetite for innovation and entrepreneurial ventures is almost unlimited. His career started at a Nippon Telegraph and Telephone, NTT, where he helped develop the first optical fiber system in Japan. After NTT, he co-founded co DDI Corporation, now known as KDDI Corporation, in 1984, the first purely private telephone company. Kazuo Inamori, another business leader from Kyoto who founded Kyocera, was an important mentor and influence on him. Sachio Simoto served on the board of several high technology companies outside Japan, and he was a trustee of the Tokyo Foundation and co-founded the Japan Academy, uh, Academic Society for Ventures and Entrepreneurs. He serves currently as uh, chair and CEO of eAccess and eMobile, known as YMobile, which he founded. He's also st a strong support supporter of universities donating to his alma maters in Japan and the United States. Sachio Simoto served as a professor at KU University uh, Graduate School and held several visiting professorships. Now let me say a few words about innovation and the importance of basic research as well as applied research at universities for business development. Switzerland and Japan are among the world leaders in innovation according to the WIPO's uh, 2022 Global Innovation Index. Switzerland ranks first and Japan 13th. When the quality of innovation is taken into consideration, both countries are among the top three and universities are the main contributors for this quality. Switzerland and Japan share also many fundamental characteristics and are ideal partners for research and innovation. I think one can understand the reasons why the internationalization strategy of the University of Zurich puts a focus on Japan. Over the last eight years, we established a strategic partnership with Kyoto University, from which uh, Sachio Semoto graduated. This last March, we held our third symposium in Kyoto with over 30 researchers from Zurich, working with Japanese colleagues on stem cell research, artificial intellig uh, intelligence, plant biology, and computer science. The cooperation pays off in more impact and visibility on an international scale. Other cooperation partners in Japan include Tokyo Medical and Dental, um, Doshisha University, National Institute of Informatics, to name just the most important. At the end, let me mention the very recent visit of Masaomi Koyama, the director of the International Affairs Office of the Japanese Ministry of Economic, Trade and Industry. Uh, METI is reaching out to selected foreign universities to join forces in innovation to tackle the five mega challenges until 2050. He showed a strong interest in the innovation hub at the University of Zurich and we discussed our involvement in the METI initiative. I am sure Sachio Simoto will give us some inspiring insights into the world of innovation and the future of Japan. Dear Sachio, the floor is yours, and please use the podest. Thank you very much. You made it. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm so honored and uh, pleased to have the first visit of the University of Zurich, uh, the largest university in the Switzerland. About five years ago, I had a chance to give a lecture at the uh, next small college called the ETH. And uh, this is uh, the first visit after Corona uh, situation, and I'm so glad to be back to uh, Switzerland. Uh, all Japanese people have, uh, pay a great respect to Swiss, 
Uh, Swiss is sort of uh, nowadays to many of Japanese. And I, I heard that uh, many Swiss people have a special kind of affection toward Japanese uh, people and the country, uh, partly because of anime. Uh, anyway, the Swiss and Japanese relationship, uh, you know, one of the highest level. And uh, I had a chance to have a chat with uh, ambassador from Japan to Switzerland a couple of hours ago. And he said that uh, Switzerland is most favorable country uh, as ambassador. And uh, he enjoyed staying in this uh, country so highly. So today's uh, opportunity is special to me. And I'm so glad to be able to give uh, some talk to you and, uh, and give some kind of observation how Japan and Asia are going to change. And Asia is going to be the focal center for the coming decades. That's no about it. But at the same time, among Asia, Japan is going to be the most important country. Oh, I give some kind of remarks on this. Allow me to provide a brief introduction of myself as uh, uh, Fushan explained, I'm the, I'm uh, 80 years old, age zero, not 18. <laughs> and I'm a sort of serial entrepreneur, which is uh, seldom in Japan, because many Japanese people do not take risk. But I'm sort of uh, very exceptional as a uh, Japanese uh, race. Uh, back in 1984, almost uh, 50 years ago, I started a small company, just eight of us, to compete against gigantic NTT. NTT, they have about 300 thousand employees. At that time, national monopoly of telecommunication giant. I was a general manager of NTT at that time, but I thought this kind of monopoly would damage the telecom infrastructure in Japan. So I better start a new company to healthily compete with NTT. That's why I decided to leave NTT and to start a small new venture called DDI, now called KDDI. And today, KDDI is about uh, 65 billion uh, francs company, almost comparable to NTT. And this brought uh, lots of healthy competition between NTT and KDDI and SoftBank, which made the drastic change in telecommunication structure in Japan. Now, Japanese consumers enjoy the world's lowest telecom tariffs on the internet because of this fierce, healthy competition existed for the past 50 years. So, unless I am Mr. Inamori, who was the CEO of Kyocera, met and decided to start a new company back in 1984. There's no presence of KDDI today, about you know, the same size of NTT. So the very important thing for you to uh, leaders in this room to start a new venture, to create a new kind of a scheme. The most important thing is you have to think. Without thinking, nothing happens. First, you have to think. Think is most important thing. If Inamori-san and I didn't meet, or even if we meet, if we never think 
you start a new company. Today's KDDI would have never existed. So the first important thing is you have to think. Think is a basic factor to create a new value. So I started this uh, DDI and uh, uh, tried to grow this company to $65 billion company. But at the same time, I have to touch upon some uh, general trend of uh, Japan for the past uh, decade. Uh, according to the IMT World Competitive Ranking, Japan held the top position until 1992. However, due to the collapse of the real estate bubble in Japan, Japan slipped to second place in uh, 1993 and continued to rapidly decline in the rank, reaching as low as 34th last year, 2022. These past 30 years have been characterized by stagnation and often referred to as the lowest 30 years of Japan. Japan's GDP also fell to the world's third largest in 2010, overtaken by China, and currently stands at less than a quarter of China's GDP. Very unfortunate. Among Asian countries, Japan's per capita GDP is significantly lower than that of Singapore and Hong Kong. Not many Japanese realize this fact. And the OPA with Taiwan and South Korea. Japan was Asian big giant, but today it's almost same size per capita basis Taiwan or South Korea. During these uh, last 30 years, Japanese companies pursued overseas uh, investments, leading to the following out of domestic industries. Deflation persisted and wages and prices remained uh, stagnant. In recent years, combined with easy money, monetary policy, the yen has dropped rapidly, positioning Japan as a country with low labor costs and low prices. We Japanese visit uh, Switzerland. We are suffering quite expensive uh, situation. One Swiss franc is about, used to be 120, 115, now 150x. 30, 40 percent increase the past uh, five years. Regarding population, Japan has been experienced a decline since its peak in nine, uh, 2008. It is projected to decrease by 25% from the current population, reaching approximately 95 million people by 2050. Currently, Japanese population is about 120 million. Particularly uh, noteworthy is the progress of uh, aging population with those aged 14 and below and those aged 65 and above accounting for 40% of the total population. So this causes a lot of serious problems. Therefore, unfortunately, the objective data of Japan indicates a country experienced a decline in economic strengths, decrease in uh, international competitiveness, and the shrinking population with the uh, aging society. Japan is facing the, this front line for aging society. These trends are expected to continue in the future Japan wants an outstanding economic 
Powerhouse House in Asia is now becoming a country similar to others. Present day Japan is in a phase of exploring future as a nation while accepting its current situation. However, Japan still boasts the world's third largest economy and maintains high technological capabilities in industrial production such as automobiles like Toyota, Honda, Nissan, and also particularly precision instruments, precise technology industry like uh, Switzerland. You can be proud of your wheat, watch, and precision technology. Just like Switzerland, Japan have very high standard of precision instrument industry. For example, iPhone. You know, iPhone is very popular in Japan. iPhone uh, produce uh, maybe in China and uh, Indonesia today, in India today, by Honghai Precision Industry, a Taiwanese Foxconn group company. Components inside the iPhone, such as cameras, displays, ceramic condensers, and vibration sensors are adopted from Japanese company like Murata, Kyocera, Nidec. Japan's electronic industry continues to provide highest quality products that rank among the best in the world. Without those kind of components, no iPhone. There are assembly company in China or India, but substantial components of iPhone are made. I would say more than 90% of iPhone components are produced in Japan. But Apple is a difficult company, one of the most difficult company to work with. Apple never allowed those Japanese companies to publicize those company uh, components coming from Japan. It is only last year Apple decided to uh, allow those companies to announce. So the world people now realize it. I, iPhone's components are made in Japan. This is very similar to Mercedes. Mercedes components of all CPUs and machines, 90% are made in Japan. Assembly is held in Germany or some other, you know, Asian countries. But components are provided Japanese. So Japan still boasts the world's third largest economy and maintains high technological capabilities in industrial production, such as automobiles, uh, and as I said, precision instruments. As an auto automotive uh, company, Toyota holds a top position in terms of global production numbers and excels a pioneer in hybrid technology. And Toyota's reputation in the developing countries, uh, like in uh, Southeast Asia. I had a visit in Vietnam and Cambodia, Philippines, uh, last couple of weeks. In those countries, Toyota's reputation is by far the best. Even though the Koreans, like Hyundai or Nokia, are penetrating those markets, it's much lower cost. Their automobile quality is not so good. Two years, their automobiles had a lot of troubles. Toyota scarcely has such kind of trouble. That's why they want to secure Toyota's second hand car. It's much higher price. The 
Toyota is not just concentrate on EV. They have a very strong in the pioneer of hybrid technology. Reports suggest that even after 2035 in the EU, vehicles with engines running on synthetic fuels will still be allowed for sale. It might be very optimistic to assume the electric vehicles will completely dominate the market and that Chinese car companies will take over the world. I don't think that will happen. Toyota's pr pr pragmatic approach of investing in both hybrid and electric vehicle seems more realistic given its position as a world-leading autom automotive manufacturer. Recently, Japan has become a relatively cost-effective country, leading to a trend of companies reshoring their operations. Additionally, factors such as COVID and Russian invasion of the Ukraine have highlighted the constraints in the international supply chains, resulting in the movement of establishing domestic production basis for economic uh, security. Moreover, investment in growth fields like uh, green energy, which I'm now focusing on, and biotechnology are uh, increasing in Japan. Furthermore, Japan possesses abundant natural and cultural tourism resources and welcome numerous tourists from abroad. I'm very confident from now on, culture and nature, those factors are, will, will become a strategically important factor, not just hardware, software production. The nature and culture will play the vital role for the coming decades. I understand many Swiss want to visit uh, uh, Japan, especially younger generation want to make a trip to Japan. That is uh, very, very welcome. And also many Japanese want to visit Switzerland. So we have a nice win-win relationship. In the latest travel and tourism development index by the World Economic Forum, Japan claimed the top spot, number one. Among them, Kyoto, which was my hometown, has become a globally unique city that has preserved its historical architecture more than 1,200 years and culture. On the other hand, Tokyo, where I live right now, the capital is a modern metropolis uh, that is extremely safe. Safety is extremely important today. If we go to New York or London, the risk of unsafe situation is inevitable. You have to pay a lot of attention not to be face uh, 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 risky issues like gun shooting or smugglers, but in Japan, you can walk, even the young ladies can walk 24 hours downtown Tokyo. The safety means a lot. Safety is extremely important feature for big city. And also the Tokyo offers a delightful cuisine. Uh, you must understand uh, uh, the, the Tokyo has the more number of Michelin restaurant than in Paris. So you could enjoy uh, lots of uh, first class cuisine in Tokyo. In the ranking of the world cities to visit by the prestigious, prestigious magazine Conde Nasto Traveler, Tokyo was chosen as number one in the world today. Up last uh, two years ago, 
London or Paris was the number one. Now the past two years, Tokyo is world number one spot in the world. In this way, Japan still possesses many things to be proud of and has great potential. Recognizing the investor, Warren Buffett, you might not know this, this old man expressed an interview in two months ago, April, of actually increased his ownership stake in Japanese trading companies. The Japanese trading company's stock increased about 60% since then. The foundation of such recognition lies in the national character and the social infrastructure that have been cultivated over a long history. Japanese people are generally diligent, like Swiss, cooperative, humble, and sincere. Public services and local infrastructure are well established. You can rely on those kind of features, this creating a safe and secure society. Even in uh, Southeast Asia, which I respect, uh, uh, but in those countries, uh, this kind of social infrastructure is very poor. You cannot drink uh, water in those countries today. I'm very happy to be back in Switzerland. I can drink uh, water here. This is very rare. Not many countries you cannot drink uh, water. So Swiss, Switzerland, Japan, United States, there are very few, only a few countries you can drink uh, water. Public services and social infrastructure well established, creating a safe and secure society in Japan. The importance of Japan in the world remains significant. However, there is always the scene that confidence has been shaken due to the relative decline in recent years. There are challenges in demonstrating the proactive leadership required by the international community. Japan is exceptionally sophisticated and good country with safety, order, and rich culture. We strongly desire to be a country respected by the world and to have confidence in ourselves. Personally, as an individual from Japan, I have led an exceptional life. In Japan, it is common for people to enter a company, spend entire lives as members of that company. However, I chose a path of changing society by repeatedly starting my own ventures and businesses. I believe that such initiative and the influence are uh, needed in Japan now, and I intend to continue taking this proactive action. Furthermore, as a part of contribution in, to society, I have established two public interest corporations. One is the Francis, my wife, Francis and Sachio Senmoto Foundation, which provides scholarship to the international Asian students who want to study in Japan, but not financial background. We cover those international students with the uh, tuition plus living expenses for covering four years. The other is the working together hand in hand with the Children Foundation which supports abuse, heavily abused children in Japan. While philanthropic and fundraising activities are not at prevalent in Japan compared to Switzerland, I believe as a member of a society and as human beings, it is responsibility of each individual to contribute to society according to their position 
I hope that you become aware that there is a people in Far East country engaged in such initiatives. And I hope my speech serves some reference for all of you. I'd like to uh, add some comments about the climate change. COP26, the 26th United Nations Climate Change Conference of the parties has ended uh, about a year ago, and the recent years, discussions with the potential to impact global landscape have intensified at COP. It is a matter of great concern for us to decipher the implication of international trends and apply them to our daily social and economic activities. I'd like to share my little thoughts at this point, including some personal anecdotes. Personally, what left the strongest impression on me as a COP26 was Vietnam. Prime Minister Phan Minh Chin of Vietnam announced their aim to achieve zero net zero greenhouse emissions, carbon neutrality by 2054 for the first time during the conference. Additionally, Vietnam joined the group of 46 countries and uh, uh, regions that agreed to phase out coal-fired power generation. This group includes not only countries like UK or France, which had already decided to complete abundance of coal power, but that 23 new countries such as Vietnam and uh, Poland, which have announced their commitment to coal phase out. It is worth noting that Japan, United States, China, India, Australia did not join this agreement, unfortunately. Vietnam reliance on coal power currently accounts for almost 50% of the electricity generation, which is not insignificant. This declaration of, by Vietnam, in contrast to India and China, stance of continuing to need coal power for economic growth was surprising and contrasting statement. It reminded me of a time before the COVID-19 pandemic when I visited Vietnam for official business and had a direct meeting with the highest ranking government communist officials at the capital of Hanoi. Even though the global decarbonization movement was not as prominent at that time compared to today, it was impressive to see that those government officials had a strong determination for renewable energy, which was relatively rare in Asia. Such determination likely became driving force behind the announcement at COP26, overcoming various domestic debates. I cannot help but deeply respect Vietnamese government for their outstanding decision making and commitment among Asian countries. Vietnam is rare. National energy choices, natural energy choices are complex issues. They have profound implications for economic growth and social life and often involve conflict, conflicting interests. However, we must not forget that Climate change is not merely the political and economic issue, but the problem that science has been warning us about. August preceding COP26, the IPCC, Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, released the six agreement report, assessment report. 
which consolidated the scientific evidence on global warming, concluding that there is no doubt that human activities have been caused warming of atmosphere, oceans, and land. Insufficient action against climate change can lead to further warming and put essential aspects of human life, such as water, food, shelter, at risk, in which could even become a trigger for conflicts and wars. We must not create a world where current generation cling to their economic and political interests, sacrifice the lives of their children, grandchildren, and future generations. With that prospect in mind, I'm also renewing my commitment and passion for the development of real renewable energy, achieving green revolution from now on. Let me stop here and uh, welcome your questions from the floor. Thank you very much for your listening. Thank you very much for this uh, very rich uh, speech. Uh, I'm uh, the moderator of this uh, discussion round, and before we enter into the question and answers with the public, I would like to ask you a secret, because in the beginning of your speech you said, the first priority is think. Uh, but I have to tell you, I think every day, and uh, <laughs> It's still hard to come by with very good business ideas or, you know. So uh, what uh, specifies this thinking? Do you mean a business plan or do you mean like to find a niche for innovation? What is this thinking part that you were stressing so much? Because um, many entrepreneurs and uh, new company creation people, they never think enough. The Thinking fast to the real bottom. This is essential in the long run to guarantee the success. You have to think very deeply. That thinking has to be something to, is, uh, to make the society better, not just for pursuing for your own interest. We have to think for the benefits of consumers, benefit of others first. That kind of uh, social, uh, what shall I say, uh, 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 sense of value is extremely important. That's number one. And of course, after thinking, you have to set the high goal. Don't set the low goal. You can set the highest goal which you can think. That is very important. And thirdly, you have to prepare a very detailed business plan, spending maybe a month or three months. And you have to repeatedly uh, revise uh, and uh, re-edit and uh, just like you can uh, imagine, just like uh, uh, when you execute, start executing, uh, you feel that I came here sometime before. That kind of image is very necessary. Uh, to that extent, you have to prepare the good business plan. And next step is take action. Even you, if you think, even if we prepare the business plan, the next important thing is take action. Don't stand still. And if you take actions, there are many failures coming. I would say, in my case, 70% of my trial were failure. But failure is not a very bad thing. Always failure is the only thing that they can give lessons. 
if you are happily make a success, success is very high risk. If you are successful, you become arrogant, you become less humble, which gives, uh, what shall I say, which gives a bad kind of uh, uh, career in your life. Uh, humbleness is crucial factor for things make it successful. Let's put it this way. Good, thank you very much. I think you have a book in planning where you describe this in more detail. <laughs> thank you. We have mic microphones in the room, but uh, let me continue by asking. So, of course, I know that you uh, handed in a business plan of 700 pages when you were looking for, uh, for credits at the, at the banks. But um, uh, let me come back to something you said, uh, and I also read about it. So you have to think, you have to rethink, you have to yes. uh, write down uh, big business plans, and then you should jump, you said, in one of your uh, texts. Now, um, compare this to the Japanese academics and to Japanese research and to Japanese entrepreneurs. I don't see a lot of jumping recently. For example, when we are working together with Japanese academics, they have a lower rate of going abroad. Uh, they have uh, more reluctance to cooperate. Compare this to, for example, Singapore or other places where the universities are thriving to get more international, to hire talents. So um, this jumping part, where do you see optimism in the Japanese situation? And and uh, how do you relate to this topic of, um, you know, uh, keeping it safe, keeping it national, that you can feel uh, is uh, deep, deeply rooted in Japanese society? That's an excellent question. I think uh, we have to learn from you and many Europeans. What I may recommend to young guys, young generation students, or young entrepreneurs, the best thing is you go around. You better go out over your country to make a trip worldwide. For example, I'm 80 years old. Last week, I was in the Silicon Valley, United States. And before last week, I was in Tokyo for a week. Before then, I was in uh, Dubai. And before then, I was in uh, Vietnam. Before then, I was in the Philippines. Why I'm traveling? The, unless you see outside of your country and uh, try to expose your skin to the outside the environment, you never get real feeling. The important thing is you have to go out by yourself and you have to look at your eye. You have to touch your by hands, and you have to feel by breeze. With that kind of real field kind of activity, you never get the information. Don't sit down and reading and analyze. The best thing is to go out, to see the world. Even at the age, I try to travel and finding a 200% perception by visiting on my food. Don't stand still. Go out. Look outside. Then you get more than 200 times return. This is very important. Thank you very much. Uh, I think uh, Kyoto University should hire you as a board member uh, because... Um, uh, Japan is undergoing a reform of the universities and uh, um, the university leadership has to be transformed into something that has more exposure to businesses. It's uh, not very much liked by academia, but uh, uh, this spirit probably is something that has to be implanted into the academia in Japan. Are there any questions from the audience? Please, in the middle, we have microphones. Please state your name and... 
Uh, Please stand. speak slowly. I have yeah, some yeah, sure. kind of uh, difficulty in my right ear. So please speak and okay. speak precisely. Varashiva Jiang San Dis. So my name is uh, uh, Shan Yama. Um, so uh, I used to study at the University of Zurich. I hope this is slow enough. You understand, yeah? So it's very slow. Um, my question is... Uh, 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 would you please explain yourself? What are you? Uh, yeah. A my, student or faculty? Or? Uh, I, I'm a Humboldt Fellow uh, in climate change. Uh, Ten years ago, i now focusing on green technology investment uh, based in Zurich. Uh, I also invest a renewable energy company myself had done my own <laughs> company in the past. So that, that's my status. Um, uh, I, I want to jump to the question because uh, I'm very curious, who is your favorite philosopher? Um, and then now, what are you looking at for your investment topic in Europe? Thanks. Uh, would you please interpret for me? So uh, the first question is, uh, what is your favorite philosopher? Your philosopher, a kind of writer that uh, inspired you the most, and the second was about uh, where would you invest uh, as an uh, entrepreneur in Europe. Well, the philosopher I learned from uh, a lot most is uh, the Mr. Inamori. Uh, who was uh, co-founder of Philidia Corporation. Uh, he started the uh, uh, entrepreneur as uh, to uh, build the Kyocera, which is the fine ceramic world leader, now about a $30 billion company from scratch. And uh, he was a sort of uh, icon in the today's Japan to give uh, lessons how to run a company. So Mr. Inamori is my mentor and a great teacher for me. And what is the second one? The second one is like, uh, where would you invest your energy in innovation if you were here in Europe? What sector of innovation would you invest into? Number one is AI. AI. AI, AI is not just a tool anymore. AI is kind of... Uh, social event. Without AI, I think nothing you could uh, understand, appreciate. So AI is not the industry, AI is not the phenomena. AI is a social change indication. So you better learn and uh, you better invest in AI, number one. Number two is, I think, environment. The, the uh, global warning is inevitable. And uh, with this global warning, maybe in two years, even the Switzerland might face uh, serious difficulty to live in much higher temperature, and uh, many Swiss might face uh, difficulty almost to share if we could not change the energy structure or lifestyle. So second is the environment. The third is uh, Healthcare, uh, including uh, the IPAs and those things. So healthcare is has a huge potential of market, and still uncultivated. And uh, Switzerland is very good at medicine, uh, 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 medical things. So Switzerland, Switzerland has a lots of a uh, high potential future, and you are very lucky to be born with. I envy you. Thank you very much. Other questions? Over here. Um, first of all, thank you very much for the interesting presentation. My name is Chingel, and I'm a business consultant. At the moment, I'm reading a book about Ikigai. So Ikigai, it says you have to do something what you like, and you have to do something meaningful. 
And as I listen to your presentation, I think you uh, you think a lot. So my, my question is: Have you are, have you used Ikigai to push your career? Can we interpret once again? Um, so uh, the importance of Ikigai. Ikigai is a Japanese kind of well. It's like a mm -hmm. lifestyle. Does it play a role in in your life? Um, or where do you get your mental strength? I mean, you mentioned also that you are like a socially spirited entrepreneur. So you have the, the kind of the welfare of uh, society in your mind. Does this uh, have any roots in some Japanese lifestyles or philosophies like Ikigai? Yes, I think your point is well received. Uh, Many times, uh, many occasions, I think myself, why I do live? What is the purpose of my living? Especially at the age of 80, many of our friends pass away. Many of uh, my surrounding people leave this society and going the other side. So I often think, why I live? What is the purpose of uh, living? After I consider thinking, my simple answer is as follows. The, the, the purpose of living is we are born and we are going to pass away just by ourselves, and uh, what I can do is uh, compared to the situation before I was born, if I could change, if I could uh, give some added value to the state when I was born, and if even the small things we could change this society or the environment. And if the situation when I pass away is even a small portion becomes better than the situation when I was born. That is, I think, that is why I live. If I could leave a little bit improvement, something beneficial for the society, that is the reason why I live. I think that's the best we could do. That's, uh, I think, uh, the purpose of my living. If I, I like to leave something, even a little, to the betterment of the society. If I could leave small, better thing compared to the time when I was born, I think that's the purpose of my life. Well, thank you very much. That's a very uh, profound discussion. <clears throat> I was expecting more business-related questions, but this is, uh, of course, also a very important question. I mean, it relates also to what my uh, cousin, uh, once remote, always says, you can make a difference and uh, you should do uh, something about it. So Arnold Schwarzenegger is in the same line as you. He wants to uh, create change and he's actually also very much engaged in green energy. We have another question here, yes? And then we should slowly think uh, to end this lecture. Lady? Yes. Fine. You are most important. Uh, I think it's not working. I give you mine. Good evening. Ah. Good evening and thank you very much for your lecture. My name is Clara. I'm a copywriter. And I have a question about your own business history. 
as you were starting, when you left the company in the telecommunication business to start your own company, you were fighting, you were David against Goliath. So you were one person fighting against a big business. And when you look back, what was the turning point? How did you manage to start so small against such a big, let's say, enemy? How did you get people to listen to you? How did you get to convince people of your own company's worth? Can you tell us a little bit about that, please? Mm -hmm. uh, the key is how to form the teams uh, to make the company successful. Essential factor is uh, even if you are a genius CEO, CEO alone cannot make anything. The most important is how to form a management team. And management team making is uh, critically important. And uh, to form a strong management team, you have to establish a mission statement. Why do you start this company? What is the purpose of this company for the society? For example, for my case, the current company of green energy company called Renova, the mission is very simple. We like to make this as much more longer peaceful situation. And uh, we try to make first local better. And the second one is we try to make the earth better. So local and earth are two critical factors for Renova. So this kind of mission statement you have to study, you have to train, you have to sophisticate and share all the team members. Unless you have that kind of mission, sense of values, nothing to sustainably uh, possible. So always I'm thinking we have to say, I, I'm gonna say the, our leaders, try to die all the people in 100% red. You have to think the same high standard uh, 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 mission statement to be shared by all your team. No mission sharing, no success. That's my experience. May I add a question here, because this is highly important for us as university leaders. How would you run a university? How do I run yeah, a what, university? What, what would be your mission statement for the University of Zurich, for example? Uh, I wonder whether you can give us some advice. I think a university is a pivotal importance presence. No university, no creativity. For example, in Silicon Valley, you might know that almost all the technologies, almost all the kind of ventures, including the uh, GAFA, actual real source of creativity comes from Stanford or Berkeley, where I used to be a visiting professor. Those university presents is the focal center to give a stimulus to new idea, new creation of values. So I think university role is uh, much, much more important than you think. I hope University of uh, Zurich can become much more important presence in the coming years, in not only in Switzerland, but also in the whole Europe. I hope with the strong, excellent leadership of Christian, this universe has tremendous potential to become European leader. Okay, we work on the mission statement that is shared, generally shared. Now we have still some questions. Uh, let us pick two. Um, you were waiting for the longest, and then here, and then we'll see. Please. 
Kumbawa, Semot Dosan. I'm an economic student at the University of St. Gallen. Uh, I have another political question which is highly present in the media. So from, I ask for the opinion of someone of, like you who grew up in the post-war Japan period, whether you think the Japanese government should increase the military spending, even nuclear capabilities, uh, meaning there's less uh, money to spend for the revival of the rural, rural communities and yeah, public infrastructures in general, to combat the threat by the big neighbors of China and especially North Korea. Yes, if you could give your comment uh, also on the Japanese majority's view on that. Thank you. Can you interpret? Uh, I was checking a bit the other questions, but I think it's actually uh, relating to the uh, part geopolitical. At the currently, there is a lot of tension in the um, uh, kind of uh, Pacific uh, area, um, and uh, a lot of um, investments are done, like, for example, 60% uh, increase in defense budget uh, by the Japanese government. I mean, this... Uh, is binding a lot of energy and also a lot of uh, people's power, so to say, that uh, is lacking then in innovation, in healthcare or wherever. So how do you see the ge geopolitical situation of Japan in particular relating to the neighbors and how does this Im have impact on the economic development? That is a most difficult question for Japan today. Japan has uh, uh, China as the largest uh, trading partner. Chinese uh, partner is more important for us as far as economic uh, 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 issues are related. But at the same time, Japan is uh, strategic, uh, most important ally of the United States because of uh, security issues. So. Japan is in a very delicate balance between two big nations. One is uh, United States, the other China. So, uh, and uh, we don't have enough uh, defense power. And uh, just like we have a very uh, difficult neighbor like North Korea, crazy leaders, they have uh, missiles and uh, the nuclear uh, power development, they are living just, you know, 100 miles away from us. And those leader, Kim Jong-il, uh, it's very difficult to predict uh, what kind of uh, next step he can take. So Japan is in a very difficult situation. But I can say that uh, China, is a big country, the, the largest country, but uh, China has much more severe problem based upon their one-child policy. And their aging problem is much severe than Japan, period. China is going to face a serious difficulty in 10 years. And China today is, I think, it's a peak of the country. It will degrade much faster than Japan's aging issues. So in that case, the Japan and uh, the China is, I think it is almost impossible position to compete against, supersede the United States. The United States remain as I'm very confident the world leader in 50 years. So anyway, Japan has to deal with delicately security uh, cases, the United States, financial cases, the China. But uh, I think uh, President Xi of China has been making a serious mistake. It's a kind of very strong communism leadership. And uh, when you visit uh, Southeast Asia, you could understand that many Southeast Asian people, in spite of uh, 
huge economic assistance coming from China. Many Asian countries hate China. And uh, China is not becoming the world leader. They have to have much uh, generous software approach rather than hard, invading, threatening uh, approach. And in that respect, uh, President Xi has been making a serious mistake, and China cannot overtake the United States at all. Let us take a final question, because uh, we are short of time, and I, I give the floor to the gentleman in the back. It should be green, and when it's green, you can, you can talk. Hello. All right. Hi, my name is Shane. Um, I have been living in Japan for the last seven years, and I have organized some of the largest tech community uh, events in the international community. Uh, so with that background, I've worked with a lot of small and medium-sized startups in Tokyo specifically. Um, and I've also talked with government related to startups, startup visas, for example, in Fukuoka and also Shibuya. From your perspective, what do you wish to see more of happening in Japan overall with the international startup integration with local startups that you think either the government or the larger business community hasn't been able to execute on, um, but, but there's still internal movement for, because there's a lot of things that are being discussed internally that will never make it public for various reasons, right? Like they'd love to have a easier startup visa, for example. Is there anything that you feel you would like to see more of in the startup ecosystem to help better integrate the international community into Japan? So um, innovation in Japan is very much nationally rooted. The question is, how can you make innovation uh, happen in Japan in a more international format, including also international entrepreneurs uh, what would you like to see the Japanese government or big companies do to uh, make it more international? Oh, to Japan, the Japanese uh, domestic market is shrinking. So Japan's expansion into international arena is inevitable. So I can see that the younger generations in Japan now looking outside much more uh, profoundly compared to, say, three years ago. I've got so many Japanese youngsters start a uh, new venture in Singapore, Malaysia, uh, 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 the, uh, Israel. So I think that there is a good sign that Japan's younger generation are paying much more attention and has a good college to start new venture outside Japan, which is a very nice trend. And I encourage them to take more risk, to, take, uh, to go more outside. And that would uh, give uh, nice feedback to Japan domestic. So I don't have uh, much doubts, uh, much pessimistic view at all. Or oh, younger Japanese relation is uh, drastically changing and they are much more global than uh, 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 40s and 50s today in Japan. So I have a very optimistic view about that. Okay, so on this optimistic note, uh, we'll end this uh, Japan lecture. Once again, a big round of applause for uh, Sachio Semoto. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs>